Looks like the battery. And I got some fenders here. First thing we're going to do is use this given tool that they gave to us and we're going to unscrew here and unscrew there and swivel this guy around. This is where the handlebars are going to go. They're going to be around this side. So I'm going to take this off and move this around to the front. Now that we've got the handlebar turned around, the clamp for the handlebar, um, we're going to take these four screws off and pull the handlebar up and put it in here and screw it back on. And then we're going to double check all the alignment to make sure I get, you know, make sure that this is straight and then we'll tighten everything up. So now we've got the handlebars on. A um, couple of things. Make sure that you, uh, when you put the handlebars up, that the display is right side up because we had to twist the handlebars all the way around like that to get them right. So be careful when you're doing that. And another thing, uh, we found that the the uh, wrenches that we got from the company, uh, the one that I needed for these four, it wasn't working well in one of them. So what I had to do was go to my old cobalt ones and this one worked fine. Also, when you're putting, the, uh, putting this on, this thing will slide a little bit left and right. So make sure you get um, the distance. Correct. We used a little ruler to make sure we got the distance correct between these two and the bar. Okay, we got a couple of boxes up here because when we put the when we put it upside down, uh, the display, the miles per hour, the speedometer, whatever it is there, uh, was hitting the 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 the, the uh, plastic packing piece there. So we put a couple of boxes on there so it's not hitting. And another thing you want to notice. When you put the wheel in, is make sure, first of all, keep your fingers off of this thing. You don't want any moisture or anything getting on this. So don't touch this. But when you put it in, make sure it goes in to the uh, brake caliper, because this is going to squeeze like that against this piece to slow you down. So if you get it outside or out here somewhere or something, you're going to be all really screwed up. So be careful with that one. That's a little be careful one. And we still have a few more things to do, but not bad. We're getting close to be done, and then uh, tomorrow we'll uh, put the battery in it and give it for a little ride. So, we are getting there. We got the light on up here. Uh, that was easy. So we're getting there. She's looking pretty good. I love the looks of the bike. I love the colors. I love the graphics. The wheels. I love the big, large wheels. They're really, uh, really very, very nice. Let me come back here and give you a little... Uh, look at this from the uh, top side. It really looks nice um, Very very nice. It's a beautiful bike. No question about it get some shoes on it uh, pedals and uh, Batten down the uh, the back of this back fender back here and uh, We should be good to go Well the bike is done <clears throat> and it looks really good but let me talk about a couple of little things that might be helpful uh, along the way. I don't know if you can see this little fender piece that comes up here that comes off the fender, but this had this little piece right on it, okay? And I almost put this on with this piece on it. Make sure when you get the fender out, the front fender, that uh, you pull this piece off because then you have this whole adjustment. The hole is much more oblong and you can have plenty of room to adjust so be careful be careful of that one. that one's kind of tricky the front wheel is held up by a bar that clamps down on the other side and goes through on here I just wanted to show you when you put these when you put the spring in the spring the smallest part of the spring here always faces to the inside so the wide part of the spring goes against the the uh, bolt that you're going to put on so the wide end let me see if i can line this up for you so the wide end is going to go in here and the small end is going to go in here on the inside so once i get the screw going i tighten this up not tight i finger tight it and then i go over to this side and i want to move this to about this position right here. And 
Then I'll tighten that again, just to snug it up a little bit. And not too much though, I want to be able to close this, but I want this tight enough on the other side. So I'm going to keep screwing this tight till I get some pressure to fold this down. I'm going to go just a little bit more. And there I go. Now I've got my wheel tightened on and I should be fine. And the wheel's not going to fall off. Nice and easy to get the wheel on and off. It's very, very simple. It's another, another story back here on the rear wheel. That's, that's another story in itself. So anyway, uh, the other thing I wanted to talk about was my brake. And there's a little screw right in here. See where my finger's pointing? That little screw right in there. That's what the guy adjusted at the brake shop, uh, the bike shop yesterday, and he uh, fixed my brake. So now my brake, instead of going all the way down to the bar, is way up here. This is solid right there. So my brake is perfect. And the other thing he said, which I thought was good advice, uh, so you don't do uneven uh, wear on your brakes. Always brake with both brakes about as close to the same pressure as you can on both uh, brakes. So try that out too when you're braking. Brake with both brakes and uh, similar pressure on both sides. One more thing somebody was asking um, on this one. This is a pressurized tube uh, on the shocks on this side right here, or the forks, I guess you'd call it. Uh, when you go over here, you're wondering, well, oh, you know, when you go up here to the top and you undo this, there's a place to put air in. Well, how much air do you put in? Okay, so in here, there's a place to put air. It's like air you put in your tire, okay? Uh, you can use your hand pump to do it. That comes with the bike. But uh, what, are the what are the pressures for this side? The other side is spring-loaded, as I mentioned. I think I might already mentioned that. But this is gas pressure, and there's a... If you go down here on the shock, on the gas pressure one, there is a little sign here that tells you uh, what everything is. So you look at your weight and how many pounds that you put in it. This thing is getting up there quite a bit. You can see some of the shock bounces I got. It's, it's, uh, the shock's working really well, so I don't know, I might leave it alone, but I'm gonna double check it and see if my weight and my pressure match up to what this little chart says on the side of the fork it is the air shock the other one is a spring shock so that has another adjustment over here on the top and you can fiddle with that and try that out till you find it to your liking a couple of other things they don't tell you is what are the tire pressures what do we use for tire pressures i talked with a few people uh get on the uh i don't like facebook but Facebook does have a um, a group on there, the, the Kai Rusher, or Cy Rusher uh, group, and for all the people that own these bikes from this company. And uh, help, they were helpful in giving me a hint. About 18 pounds is good on this bike. Seems to work okay. I've got 18 pounds in here, and it seems to be working well. You can play around with At least you have a starting point. Uh, the other thing is the computer here. Well, the display, uh, they do have a printout for how to adjust this. The battery slips in real easy here. Also, there is, on the other side, an external button here that you can, you can move. And by moving it, you can plug the battery in. If you can see it that way, you can plug the battery in right there. And that works fine. Okay. On off. They don't tell you which is on or off. So just look for the smiley face. You push that. You get a smiley face because the power is on. Uh, the other thing I would recommend is when you park the bike. Always turn it off. I turn the, uh, the uh, display off first with the bottom button. And then I turn this off next. Okay, and I never charge. I would never charge the battery with the battery on. Make sure you have the battery off when you're not uh, when you're charging the battery. A little disclaimer here on the bike. Um, I didn't get this bike for free. 
It was not given to me, not, not, not given to me. I pay full retail for the bike. So I am beholding to nobody. I'm beholding, I'm not beholding to Cy Russia. I'm not beholding to anybody else that builds or sells this bike. I think my, I'm trying to do a fair and honest evaluation of the bike. As a brand new bike owner, this is my first e-bike I've ever owned. And although I have ridden a lot of motorcycles, but I've never owned an e-bike. So you're going to get my first impressions as a new bike owner. And uh, it's that simple. So nobody gave me a bike. Nobody sent me a bike. None of that jazz. So I'm not, I'm not beholding to anybody. Just thought I'd add that in here.